I'm Corbett Wall with DB Auction, here with your feeder flash for Monday, September the 28th, brought to you in part by Vitalix Lick Tubs. Try their new feedlot starter tubs. They're the ultimate combination of health and immunity. They recommend you give, use those for the first 21 days to have the best luck on new arrivals. The feedlots are full, and, and we've known that, but the cattle on feed report that we got Friday afternoon uh, they they definitely showed that uh, our feedlots are full. Our September 1st uh, actual uh, inventories are 103.7% of a year ago, so 3.7% larger. Uh, and that was just a smidge big, bigger than the, the guess, the average guess of the analysts that uh, project that at 103.4. But 11.4 million head of cattle in your in your feedlots a thousand head or bigger that's a bunch you know it, it's really hard for us to gauge that but uh, you know I tell you about those cattle on feed reports every time they put one out there's something that's a record with since the series began but uh, sure enough that 11.4 percent million head uh, was the biggest they'd had for that particular report since the series began in 1996 and they just continue uh, next month will be something the biggest uh, or the strangest or the biggest move or drop or gain or something in 25 years but uh, indeed there's a lot of cattle on feed we know that but I think our market ready supplies of fat cattle are going to um, be in the cattle sellers favor here uh, over the next 30 to 45 days. If you look back at some of those placement numbers that we had uh, during the onset of COVID when things were really, really tough, you know, and they had things locked down and we thought uh, they were going to shut down the state lines and it was going to be like a Red Dawn with Patrick Swayze and we we're going to have to, you know, start uh, going out and, and getting guns and, you know, hoarding food and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, we're bound to see a lull here, and if we can't uh, if we can't gain a lot in our markets, which I hope we can, and when we've gained quite a bit here the last couple of weeks, these, all of a sudden these cattle sellers have learned to use leverage again. Uh, they they don't sell them right away. They don't start selling them on a Monday or a Tuesday when your packers come out, even though the packers are telling them they don't need cattle for another month. Yeah, if you don't need cattle for another month, why are you coming out on a Monday and a Tuesday uh, trying to buy my cattle at steady or lower prices? No, they've been holding off. Uh, this past week, they held off uh, until Thursday before they sold really anything at all and end up gaining a couple bucks. That's great. But hopefully, we can get our carcass weights uh, back manageable. Uh, as we go through these lighter numbers of market ready cattle. That's something that we really need to get done. So we're hoping that. But uh, let's look at the cattle on feed report. I'll go ahead and give you those percentages again like you normally hear them. Uh, your, your September 1st inventories, the actual come in at 103.7. Your average of the analyst guess was 103.4. You know, yeah, maybe a little bit bearish, but not bad. Uh, your placement numbers, they are bearish. Uh, come out at 109.1 uh, over 2 million head of cattle placed on feed in August but 109.1 compared to the average in your analyst guess which was 105.9 so about three percentage points there but it really didn't make that big of a difference in the whole scheme of things it just went up uh, three tenths of a percentage point on your overall inventories but uh, uh, your marketings were were fully neutral to the friendly side uh, with your marketings through August 96.8 average year analyst guess was 96.6 .6, and we had one fewer day there of marketings but uh, not sure how we can ever miss those because uh, you know our, our USDA tells us exactly how many cattle we harvested every day in every facility so uh, that should be a no-brainer there but it's a little bit bearish on your cattle and feed report, uh, but not terrible. Not as bad as a lot of people had thought it might be. And your board was, was down pretty good on Friday, and I think people were kind of figuring that in. So I really wouldn't expect your board to be down terribly bad to start the week off here, because I think we were kind of braced for that a little bit anyway. 
we look back at the week what happened uh, you know our calves are getting harder to sell uh, as we've got these calves coming we're going we're to start October this week uh, that's dead calf month it's it's uh, we don't have a lot of places to put these calves well, we, I just said our feedlots are full there's not that many growing yards that are really uh, you know hungry to take on a lot of calves uh, they're hard to straighten up this time of year we've got here probably you know 30 to 60 days depending on what part of the country you live in before you get a hard freeze this is the worst time in the world for calves and it's when most people have or when a lot of people have more of them than any other time and a lot of them are unweaned uh, don't have their shots and, and the discounts are just uh, insurmountable compared to what uh, par is and par is is not an unweaned when par is a weaned uh, calf uh, for 30 to 45 days at least uh, with at least one round of shots and maybe two but the, the discounts just keep getting more severe I tell you what we got sticky flies it's dry everywhere of course you're, you're uh, farmers that are harvesting right now aren't complaining about it at all. There's sure not going to be any uh, moisture discounts on this corn. I mean, it's dry and they are going through it in a hurry. We're going to get this uh, harvest done in record time. kind of machinery they have now, it, it's unbelievable how fast they can they can uh, get that harvest taken care of. But they're, they're rolling through it pretty fast. Uh, but you get, uh, I tell you what, in most of Kansas, most of Oklahoma, most of Texas, uh, all of New Mexico, it's really bad down in uh, eastern Arizona. Uh, it, you know, the fires they've had in Colorado, up in the mountain states, Montana, it is dry a lot of places. And that, that's going to leave fewer places to turn these calves out. Uh, they're, they're just not going to have a lot of places to go with these calves. And, uh, and some of your big feedlots like to put calves on feed. Uh, you know, but they're, they're just not going to have room for them. So I just don't see uh, the market on these calves getting much better until we start shaking some more of these uh, cattle loose, uh, getting them worked through the system, get some hard freezes, uh, and that that will help the, the health on them. They just don't have time to straighten up all these new arrivals when they're having that much trouble with them. But tell you what, the yearling market is good. Uh, what few true yearlings are left out there, a lot of demand for those even if they're backgrounded meaning that they've been eating a ration but if they're true yearling cattle that have been together for a long time good demand for those because we're just running out of them and and calves are dominating and in almost all of your auction sales uh, the percentage of the run that's calves just continues to grow and it's overtaken uh, your yearling cattle and overtaken your heavier cattle too but uh, on Tuesday we had uh, news that come out that uh, we should be very excited about. Uh, the Cattle Market Transparency Act was introduced uh, by Deb Fisher, who is a Republican uh, uh, senator from Nebraska. She's been in the business, uh, grew up in the business there, knows what's going on. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's similar to your 5014 bill. Uh, but I've talked to some people in the know and they think that it's going to get more support than 5014 even. And, and there may be a way to kind of connect the two. But, uh, you know, we, we're still all about 5014. Likely uh, what Deb Fisher's introduced is going to leave us something in the Southern Plains, more what I was talking about here when we first started talking about this, like the 3014. Uh, but, but it's going to give a minimum a negotiated cash mandates uh, regionally so they're going to set those regionally you're going to have a comment period uh, and and see what, what the best place for those is and because in the southern plains 50 is too much I tried to tell you guys I've been telling you for nearly a year it was too much but uh, your, your, your outfits in the Midwest uh, on the northern plains they had policy for 50 and so it was a lot easier for them to push 50 and and uh with chuck grassley there in iowa he was going to go 50 but you know it's hard to go from six or seven percent you know in texas to 50 overnight it, you know it, that is a big ask and, and that's why you got so much uh, opposition from it uh from your southern plains uh, uh cattlemen's uh, associations but the hell of it is they're not going to support any level of minimum cash requirement because they're working for your 
your big corporate feeders that are in line and in, in, in bed with your packers and that's what they want to do. But if this thing gets a lot of support and I'm, and I'm hearing that it's getting a lot of support and, and likely not between now and the election, but at some point and, and probably after we get rid of Pat Roberts from being the chairman of the, the Senate Ag Committee, thank God, can't, uh, good riddance to him. Uh, getting out of there because he, he just uh, you know just stonewalled anything we were trying to do here but uh, uh, she's also asking on top of regional minimum requirements of cash trade uh, also asking for uh, to, to loosen up your confidentiality a little bit uh, through mandatory price reporting uh, have make uh, different contracts available on these formula contracts so people can see uh, have more transparency and seeing what's going on out there, what these people are getting for cattle that don't ever trade any cattle, but they abuse the cash system that the little guys are making. Uh, she she wants to have a, a library of contracts per se that you can go through there and look at the different uh, ways you could sell cattle. Uh, she also wants uh, the packers to report the number of cattle that they have scheduled for delivery for slaughter every day for the next 14 days and that'd be some pretty good information there and you think gosh they're never going to tell us that the hogs uh hog packers already do that guys let's look at your board for last week october live cattle monday was down 65 cents tuesday down 22 wednesday up 67 thursday up 87 friday down 45 cents october uh, live cattle futures uh ended the week at 107.57 that was just 22 cents higher for the week and these futures have been trading in a narrow range they've, they've been fairly volatile here this last week but still uh, not not bumping up uh, you know your your upper limits or lower they've been doing this for quite a while December live cattle ended the week at 11140 that was down just 45 cents for the week October feeder cattle Monday was down 17 Tuesday down 162 Wednesday up 90, Thursday up 75, Friday down 195 with uh, October feeders ending the week at 14032, uh, down $2.10. Uh, you look in contrast, September, which went off the board this past week at 142.45, had to go up uh, about a buck and a half or more uh, just to stay level with your index cash prices. So. Uh, it's kind of nice whenever they do have to level up together, but nobody was trading that thing anymore, so uh, nobody pays too much attention to it. Uh, look at your next month out on feeder cattle futures, November end of the week at 140.15. Fat cattle trade through Thursday, 89,800 head, and then they had fairly significant trade, especially in the northern plains on Friday. So we'll have over 100,000 head cash sales for the week. That's kind of where we gauge whether we had a very good uh, movement of cash sales or not, and, and we'll have over 100,000. Uh, your live sales of steers and heifers uh, were two bucks higher. They ranged from 102 to 107 uh, through the week, and uh, with uh, mostly all at 105 for the most part. That's what your live uh, fat cattle market is, is 105. The weighted average through Thursday was 105.07 on live steers. Dress market also two bucks higher, ranging from 163 to 166, mostly 165 there. Annual weighted average on dress steers very near 165 at 164.96. It'll be even closer to that whenever we get the whole week's wrap up on Monday, and I'll tell you about that on our next visit. Friday they did have some more cleanup trade, and the market was just as good even though the board was down some. Iowa 4,200 head confirmed for Friday, 104 to 107, but mostly 105. They had some 164 to mostly 165 dressed. Nebraska 2,600 head, all at 105 and 165. Kansas 1,600 head confirmed, 105 and 165. And Texas even had a few on Friday, 700 head at 105. Box beef cut out values were actually higher for the week, and you would not pick the last full week of September and say that your box beef cutout values would normally be higher because normally they're lower in a seasonal trend uh, but your packers were, were kind of trying to hold those values up a little bit and they were actually able to move some product 
uh, demanding a little bit better price for them. But uh, for the week last week, on your weighted average price, Choice Cuts 216.87, up 99 cents uh, compared to the weighted average from the previous week. Uh, your Select up a dollar 71 with a weighted average price of 206.89. And almost 700 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings, which is pretty good whenever they're trying to hold the market up when it's normally down the same time of year. But uh, your slaughter was pretty impressive 651,000 for the week, 6,000 more than the previous week, even 1,000 more than the same week a year ago, with a pretty decent Saturday there. Let's talk about your feeder cattle market, your real time index on DV auction. Uh, ended the week at 148.88. That was down uh, 25 cents for the week, uh, which is not too bad. With a lot of calves moving into that index, they go in there, uh, guys. Now, whether it's your real-time index or your CME cash feeder index, those weights of calves that are in the sevens, and there'd be a lot of them, uh, they're getting discounted, and, and they're in your index, so it's going to pull that down some. Uh, your cash feeders and your sales. Uh, all your yearling feeder cattle and even your bigger backgrounded uh, calves, long time weaned, that are big enough to go right into your finishing yards, mostly steady on those and pretty good demand on them uh, throughout. And maybe just a little unevenly steady, but for the most part, steady. Uh, your calves were more uneven and more pressure on them uh, because of the dry conditions around, like I've talked about. There's just if we don't get some rain down there in the southern plains here pretty quick, there's not going to be hardly any wheat pasture grazing uh, this fall and winter, and there's not very much of it uh, that's irrigated. And I tell you what, uh, the irrigation is not too much uh, on your on your winter wheat, uh, especially for that that's grazed. If they do put irrigation on them, a lot of them won't let you graze it. But uh, you know, most our water table is getting so low and. We've got all those California dairies that have come in here and they've all got straws stuck in the ground and they never turn them off. You know, we don't have a lot of rules down here. Everybody tries to be fairly conservative, uh, but the, you know, they're growing something, uh, some kind of silage crop all the time, year round, and they never turn off a sprinkler. And uh, you know, and they may hire everything done, uh, build a $3 million home and a $10 million dairy and drive around in new pickups all the time. Uh, and, and wait for a government bailout for the most part. But let's talk about uh, your markets. Late in the week last week on Saturday, Fort Scott, Kansas. I tell you what, uh, it's kind of east central Kansas there. 60 head, 860 pound steers bring 144.85. Pretty darn good there. Crawford Livestock Market, Crawford, Nebraska. 60 head, 847 pound steers. Uh, up there in the sand hills bring $150. I tell you what, those yearling feeders, especially the green grass, uh, they, will, they will bring it all still, and that's as much as they brought all summer long. How about some lightweight calves? St. Ons Livestock, my buddy Justin Tupper up there in St. Ons, South Dakota, 109 head of 499, or might as well say 500 pound steers, bring 172.50. And the top quote that I saw late last week, anywhere come out of Burwell Livestock Market, Burwell, Nebraska, up there on the Yellow Brick Road. 63 head, 635 pound steer calves, 164.50. And that's your feeder flash for Monday.